Have you ever wondered what it's like to be in a band? I'm Wade and I'm going to take you along on a backstage pass with the band. Hey, welcome everyone. Every show has a beginning and no, no, today's not any different. We have a show tonight and I'm going to go out and get some exercise because these old bones moving and uh, got to load up here and get a stage set and all that other stuff and uh, you know makeup and everything else. So uh, let's get started. So show the night's what, 9.30? 9.30? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So we have show at 10 o'clock. And it's, what time is it right now? It's what? It's close to 12? Close Something to 12? Like it's close to 12 o'clock. So we're going to get in a little jog at the park. And then we'll go stop by Best Buy and pick up some stuff. And then uh, we got to break the equipment down and load up the truck and get to the show. We do a little vocal warm-ups on the way. Stuff like that. Uh, anyways, you know, let's get to the park. This park we're going to, man, I love this park. It's a great, great park. It's got a kicking skate park in it, too. I used to be a skater back in the 80s down in South Florida, Pompano Beach. We were called Team Mop. Uh, and uh, we're a bunch of skate punks. Don't ask me what Team Mop stands for, I won't tell you. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, the cops used to hassle us all the time. We used to go to the mall. We didn't mall grab. Uh, but yeah, we, we skated uh, for Caribbean Surf Systems was the name of the, the surf shop we skated for. Or we pretended to skate it for anyways. Uh, our friend Ron owned the shop, so we always had his stickers and stuff on our boards and decks. And He would like, give us the run of where we set up our skates uh, in the back of his shop. and It was pretty cool. He was almost like a second dad. That was really, really cool. He also was a musician, too. He played guitar. He was from California, and he had that Spicoli accent going on. He used to sing the Volkswagen song about being stuck in fifth gear and a couple other hippie tunes back in the surfing days of the 60s. He was a pretty cool guy. Uh, I wonder what happened to him. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Love this It's down a mile long trail, and it's got a half a mile long trail. It's got a workout area. Skate park is pretty badass. I'll show you some of that too. Gotta get in some exercise. It's good for you. Keeps your stage legs going. The children's forest. Is the forest filled with children. Seem so far away, maybe only yesterday. Can't believe it. Now it's late November. Kids are growing fast to see. That makes me feel better. Got a guy more close to my age. Dude, there's totally people my age out here skating. I gotta bring my board back out. Of course, I need some knee pads and some helmets. But... Awesome. Whew. Got it. Got it in, man. Uh, I think we're gonna stop at a skate shop. Actually, I was gonna look at some some pads for us old man skaters. So hmm, check it out. Oh, holy crap! Got me some gear. I'll be able to skate again. Sweet. Now off to Best Buy. It was kind of ironic getting back into skating uh, back when I was doing it back in the 80s. I guess I was, I was skating between 86 and 1990. And uh, the tricks we did back then, <laughs> it's a little bit different than the tricks they do now, like you know, tray flips and 
and all those. Uh, so I mean, I, I saw some channels I watch like Josh Garrett and rail skating, and you get to watch those guys. It got me back into it again. I just didn't have any pads to protect myself because old bones break. You know, being 42 years old, going on 43, gotta protect the noggin. All right. Uh, you guys recognize this area. Uh, maybe some of you might recognize this area. Uh, if you use your Colombo-like skills, you can tell that this is the Best Buy that Adam the Woo visited back when he was coming through for Dragon Con. Uh, I'm a follower of Adam the Woo. I'm sure some of you guys are too. But anyway, this is this would be the Best Buy right in here, the Michaels. Time for some grub at McAllister's. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Love me some McAllister's. I've never had it. McAllister's mango tea. Totally awesome. Oh. Alright, now it's time to get the stuff broken down and loaded up on the truck. Let's get done. truck loaded, the only thing left to do now is to get ready for the show. Pick out a, pick out your wardrobe and do your makeup, do your hair. Always, this is a huge peeve I've got with so many bands. Wear your uniform, okay? All the pros say it. Do not look like your audience, okay? Just do it up a little bit, but don't come out in a pair of pants and a t-shirt and some sneakers. Wear your uniform. You're at work. You, you are representing your brand. It's all about branding. It's just, even if you're not musically dead on or sloppy, people will look that past that if you have something visual to offer. So you've got to, got to wear your uniform. It's really important. Even for a band that's playing covers, you know, just like it is for originals, to establish a folk visual brand. You know what I'm saying? You've got to do it. Just like this guy right here, Adam Ant. This guy, he knew how to visually set a brand and not look like his audience. Like that, show is over. We're loaded up, heading home. It's like two o'clock. Tired. 